That's Sutton, and I'm Simply, and welcome back to another Purple Rain Report. Yes, welcome back to another Purple Rain Report with Sutton Def, the uh, new birthday boy, I should say, and Simply oh, AS10. Thank you for coming through to this episode. Um, Ravens of 49ers preview, some are calling it a Super Bowl preview. Uh, Lamar Jackson is just brushing it off his shoulders, um, what a leader does. Uh, but thank you all for coming through to this episode. You can follow us on Instagram at the Purple Rain Podcast. You can follow this guy on Instagram, on Twitter. At Sutton Def, you can follow me on Instagram at simplyas10.prod and on Twitter at simplyas10. And uh, we are three days away from uh, yeah. Christmas. Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, maybe, like you said last episode, get some money. You want to go to Manscaped? Use code PRP, 20% off your whole order and free international shipping. Uh, but if not, you are screwed on gifts. I'm sorry. So if you <laughs> haven't done your gift shopping, I... I'm sorry. Uh, go out there and try to get whatever is left. But yeah, thank you for coming through to this Purple Rain uh, report. Ravens and Niners, I think the biggest game of the year so far in the NFL, not just for the Ravens. Um, I fully expect this game to break records. Mm. Uh, you're going to get that tweet probably a couple days after, like, this was the most watched game of the year, uh, most watched game in the past couple of years outside of the playoffs or Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, I mean... The the main thing is because it's on Christmas, right? I mean, of course this mm-hmm. this will be a this will be a huge uh, national televised game. You know, the ratings will be crazy. Even if it wasn't on Christmas, even if it was like a four four o'clock game or something like that, or a prime time game on a regular weekend, it would still go crazy. Do you know stupid numbers? But this, since it's on Christmas, I can definitely see it. Like you said, breaking records. And I hadn't really thought about it until you just brought that up just now. So that's interesting. That's very interesting. But I wanted to talk about. Uh, Man, I want to get right into the I word report, man, because I okay. saw yesterday there were some things that came out. And I know you saw it too. Let's go ahead and bring this up on screen here. Yeah. Odell Beckham was one, and yes. Zay Flowers was another one that I was looking at. Like two of our, you know, main top targets for Lamar Jackson this year, uh, kind of dealing with some stuff. But go ahead and run through the uh, the I word report so we can we can get through. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So for for the Ravens, um, full was Malik Cam. He's still on the. Uh, IR reserve, and then we have obviously Zay Flowers, Arthur Millett, Ronnie Stanley, Marcus Williams, all limited, and then like you said, Odell Beckham Jr. did not practice, and Jalen Armour Davis did not practice. Um, I wouldn't say it's worrying with Odell; it's illness, but with Zay, with his foot, that's just this uh, how silky smooth he is. I really hope it's nothing serious. Harbaugh downplayed it, but Harbaugh literally would downplay a season-ending injury, <laughs> like we've seen that before, uh, but. I think we'll find out more today, and I think we leave Saturday for, for San Francisco as well. So today we'll find out really who's going to play and who's not going to play. Um, and then for the Niners, I mean, they have a, a plethora. Uh, Eric Armstead didn't practice. Nick Bosa didn't practice just for rest. Uh, linebacker Oren Burks didn't practice. And then I'm looking as well. Elijah Mitchell didn't practice in Trenton Williams. And then uh, Jawan Jennings is in protocol. Jawan Hargrave, I think – as Ravens fans, Hargrave and Armstead are the two. Got to keep your eyes on because I think they missed last game. So if they miss this game yeah. as well, that'd be big. Let us open up our run game. There are two run stuffers and Hargrave is a pass rusher as well. I think he had like over 10 sacks last year with the Eagles. Uh, and then Ted Ross really has not practiced. Defensive end, Clean Farrell didn't practice. And then guard Spencer before practice. So they're banged up a little bit more than we are. Uh, but yeah. to seeing Zay Flowers on there. And Odell kind of scares me, but mainly Zay because Odell's just an illness. Uh, yeah, and another big thing that I'm looking at too, I see being Ronnie Stanley, like you mentioned, with that concussion limited on Thursday's practice. What is going to be the game plan for left tackle? You know, is it going to be a Macari out there starting, or are we going to trot Stanley out there and see what he does, just kind of test the waters with him? Because the last couple of Sundays, things have not gone so well with Stanley playing left tackle. He's been getting blown up. He's been consistently allowing the the most pressures out of anybody on that offensive line. So I don't really trust Ronnie Stanley at this you know specific time in the season, unfortunately. 
uh, you know, as high paid as he is, as as valuable as he is to this team because of his contract, he's not performing. And he's not right because of that I word. So I say we keep him out, to be honest with you. I say we get Makari out there. Again, <clears throat> like, like we just talked about before we went live, this is an NFC matchup. So, yes, like in terms of like foreshadowing a potential Super Bowl, yes, this is a very important game. But in terms of seeding and our, our jousting for the AFC one seed, this doesn't mean as much as it would if we were playing against an AFC opponent, you know, because jousting for position against other AFC teams. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I say we rest Stanley, to be honest with you, and just let him get all the way right, because obviously right now he's not good to go. But what do you think happens at that left tackle position? Yeah, I think they're going to try to trot him out, and they're going to just do that left tackle or tackle by committee. You know, you're going to get that that tweet notification from, if you have one, Jeff Sharipek. It's going to say, Makari is now in the game at left tackle, or Falele is now in the game at right tackle. Um, that's, I think he's going to play, and I think they're just going to start rotating. Uh, but it's going to be a tough matchup for whoever's at tackle. Like, I mean, we talked about the their D-line. Bosa, Young, like Gregory as well. And then if Hargrave and, and Armstead play, it's, that's just – the Lions going to have their – they're just – Lions going to have their work cut out, basically. Um, so I, I hope we're ready with tackle-wise because we saw what the Jags said to us. Like, that was – how many pressures did Ronnie Stanley give up? Was it six, I believe, he allowed? I think it was six, yeah. 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 Um, and that was Josh Allen, who is ferocious. So it's not going to get easier this week either. Yeah. And, you know, playing the 49ers in San Francisco on Christmas is going to be a crazy environment. Um, you know how much the Niner gang loves their San Francisco 49ers. And for the anybody who's out there on Christmas Day is going to be in the spirit to cheer mm -hmm. against, you know. Obviously, I mean, it's a home game for them, so they're going to cheer against the Ravens anyway. But, like, there's going to be that extra motivation to kind of get that one, you know, especially since they're playing – um, the second best team in the league, according to most people around the league. Uh, okay, so that covers the I word, aka the health report. Now we're going to go ahead and get into the matchup breakdown between these two mm -hmm. teams, which is our official Purple Rain preview, as we normally would do. Going to go ahead and run through the Ravens and 49ers current stats and rankings when it comes to offense and defensive metrics. So looking at the Ravens on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see they throw for 210 yards per game on average, which is ranked 20th in the league. They're rushing for about 164 yards per game, which is ranked first in the league. So, again, as we've seen all season, there's kind of like this disparity between the rushing game and the passing game. The passing game just hasn't all the way caught up to where the rushing game is in terms of production. But, you know, we've seen flashes here and there. We're getting there. Wink, wink, Isaiah. Like, I think he's going to have a big game. Just foreshadowing right there. Passing yards allowed per game, 186 from the Ravens, and they're allowing 102 on the ground. Uh, they're scoring 27.4 points a game, which is ranked fourth in the league, and they're allowing 16.1 per game, which is ranked first in the league. So number one defense in the league and the fourth scoring offense in the league. Not bad. Not bad. I mean, Ravens are sitting at 11-3. I think that, honestly, I don't even know if we predicted ourselves to be this good this late in the season, Alex. If we go back and look at our our prediction videos, what, do, you, do you remember what you predicted? I think <laughs> – I think I just 11 to 12 wins. I think that's what okay. I was at. Okay. So. Which is still, I mean, realistic. You know, I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if we dropped one or two games. I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we take the foot off the gas just a little bit just because, you know, we've got the playoff position, whatever, but hopefully not. Hopefully not. Yeah, hopefully moving not. on to the 49ers side of the football. Uh, they're throwing for 273 yards per game, which is ranked third in the league. They're rushing for 140 yards per game, which is ranked third in the league. Uh, they're allowing 221 through the air and 89 on the ground per game. They're scoring 30.4 points a game, which is ranked third in the league. And they're allowing 16.7 points per game, which is ranked second only to our Baltimore Ravens. So, Alex, looking at these numbers here, uh, what can you kind of decipher as what needs to be a, a big key to victory for the Ravens to walk away with a W on Christmas night. I mean, look at their offense, man. Top three in both passing and rushing. Um, I mean, obviously we're number one in rushing yards per game. Doesn't hurt that we put up uh, 270 last week, but I didn't know <laughs> 273 passing yards and 140 rushing yards a game. Like, wow. I mean, they I 
they're just such a really, they're such a good team. And you look at they putting up 30 points and allowing 16.7. But I'm looking at our, our defenses. I mean, the number one and number two scoring defenses. Mike McDonald, please have some crazy magic for us this week. I don't know what he's going to draw up, but you already know he's going to go crazy. I don't know if he's going to be in the lab cooking up something right now. But, yeah, I mean, our defenses. Like, how is our defense going to stop their offense? Um, they have weapons all around, even their third-string receiver, I like. Um, and their line, obviously, Trent Williams and the future Hall of Famer. And Brock Purdy leads the league in passer rating um, and passing touchdowns as well. So I'm not really sold on the game manager, um, but he, he definitely doesn't make mistakes, but and he can put the ball where he needed to. So make him uncomfortable. Um, and we'll get into our keys, but Kyle Hamilton, I think, is going to be that guy who can really uh, mess with that Niners offense. Oh, yeah. No, that's a good point right there. I mean, honestly, I was thinking uh, a big key to victory for the Ravens would be the defensive line has to keep – Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith clean. Uh, mm. Those guys cannot be dealing with offensive linemen getting up to the second level and taking them out of the plays uh, because you have such dynamic playmakers and guys like Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel who are going to be running a lot of short and shallow routes, things like that. Of course, Christian McCaffrey running between the tackles, outside of the tackles. Debo Samuel might be doing the same thing on jet sweeps, things like that. We're going to need guys to get those guys on the ground. So. If PQ and Roquan are, are occupied getting blocked by offensive linemen who are reaching the second level, again, that's not going to bode well for the defense at all. They're going to be getting lots of chunk plays. It's going to look like a mismatch on Madden. That's what it's going to look like, uh, and it's not going to be pretty. So that that's going to be my, my biggest number one key to victory is, is keeping our linebackers clean so they can you know be afforded the opportunity to make plays uh, in the most opportune spots. Now, uh, number two – for me would be, I mean, again, like you said, they're such a damn good team. Rushing the football, 140 yards per game, third in the league. Passing 273, third in the league. I agree with you on the uh, on the notion that we got to get pressure on Brock Purdy. I mean, that, it's just as simple as that. I mean, and I'm looking at a lot of these guys, these veterans on, on our edge rushing unit to turn back the clocks for especially this game right here. This is a statement game, if I've ever seen one. Um, this is probably the biggest game the Ravens – have played in the regular season uh, just because of the foreshadowing of the super potential Super Bowl matchup again. And I don't want to, you know, I can knock on wood there. Right. But uh, that, that's what it's kind of looking like. These are two of the two of the best teams in the league. Now get pressure on Brock Purdy. And so I'm, like I said, I'm looking at Jadavian Clowney. I'm looking at Kyle Van Noy. I'm looking at um, uh, Adafi Owe. I'm looking at all those guys, man. I mean, it's going to be tough getting by like guys like Trent Williams and everybody else on that offensive line has been pretty good, but those are going to be my two biggest keys to victory. You got any more? Uh, I guess our O line too. That's like, I'm, I'm worried about it. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. Uh, just kind of seeing what the Jags did to us last week. Like Lamar can't run around all day from guys like both so young and, and what they have compared to what the Jags have. Um, he can make him look silly a couple of times, but after doing that magic, it's going to run out, unfortunately. And I hate saying that, but the, our line has got to do their job and block for our quarterback um, in, in the past game. So. Yeah. Now, the good news is that they <laughs> do allow a good chunk of yardage through the air. So, I mean, maybe there is an opportunity for Lamar Jackson to link up with, you know, Odell Beckham Jr. a few times, maybe three, four times. Maybe a Zay Flowers kind of gets involved this game after having a very quiet game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. You, know, you, you really never know with this offense. It's kind of week to week, which is a little bit frustrating, right? Because it's like we would love to have that guy like that, you know, I don't know, A.J. Brown or the, the Justin Jefferson or the Cooper Cup or somebody like that who just week in, week out, you know this guy's going to get – 100 yards receiving you know he's probably going to get a touchdown that sort of thing like just to have that surefire guy but for the ravens it's not like that in the passing game it's really week to week this week maybe odell's getting more of the uh targets and then the next week maybe zay flowers is getting more of the targets and you know we sprinkle in isaiah likely in there now it's, it's it kind of it kind of goes it's ebb and flow with the offense right so mm -hmm. um we'll, we'll see what happens with it on on christmas day but in terms of what guys need to get involved in the passing attack I really do want to see more Isaiah Likely. He's got to be mm -hmm. more of a focal point. I've been saying it for weeks now. And, and you know, it's been coming to fruition. He's got a touchdown in the last 
two of the last three games, I want to say. And yeah, Todd Munkin is really, really working him into the offense. But what other players on the offense would you like to really see get going in order to impact this game? It's got to be likely. It's like my number one, obviously, to agree with you, but one of our running backs, and I'm I'm going to go Justice Hill here. Um, mm. I want him to show off that speed and that burst. We know what Gus can do. But as for Justice, like we were seeing earlier in the year, he was breaking off some runs, but just a ball carrying issue. I know you're a big fan of Justice Hill as long as well as I am. But we need someone to open up this run game in order for us to spread out the pass game. And like you said, they're giving up 221 passing yards a game. Uh, it's more than what we average. So take advantage of it. And we have the guys to do it. Uh, I thought last week was the Bateman game. Uh, after the first drive, he had two catches and didn't really turn out the way I hoped it to be. Uh, but maybe it's this week or maybe it's the Zay Flowers week. We don't know what receiver's week it is, but I do want Justice Hill to break off three runs of 10-plus yards to kind of make the defense respect him. Uh, yeah. Will it happen? I'm not too sure. <laughs> but I know that's what we both are kind of – we need one of our running backs to step up now since our home run hitter, like you say, is out. Like, who are you scared of in the Ravens' backfield right now? Right. Besides Lamar Jackson. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Good points there. Good points there. All right, let's go ahead and get into some okay. score predictions yes. for this game here. I think this should be a very interesting segment. Listen, if you guys are, are watching or listening to this – episode of the Purple Rain Report. Make sure you drop your score predictions for this Christmas night game between the Ravens and 49ers down below in the comments section. would love to know how you guys think this one is going to turn out. But Alex, I'll start with you on this one. How do you think this one ends up and what do you think the score will be? I have us dropping this. 30 to 27. Uh, it's not... I, I've seen some people predicting a blowout. I don't think it's going to happen. These are... Two teams that are number one seeds, respectively. But I do think, like like you've brought up, um, they're fans, number one. Uh, they're going to be out crazy, bang, bang, Niner game. Uh, we're going to the West Coast, back-to-back uh, -back away games, you know, having a Sunday night game and now a Monday night game. Um, I trust our coaching. I just think just small stuff like that might be the difference. I think we lose a heartbreaker, but I think it's for the best because I think kind of it's a reality check. Like, you know, it's a week-to-week -week league, uh, and then we were home for the Dolphins next week, and I think we picked that one up. So I'm looking at the positives through a negative. I do have us dropping this um, by only a field goal. I think it's going to be a really good game, possibly game of the year, depending how it goes. Yeah, I do not have us dropping this game. I actually have us winning this game in uh, exhilarating fashion. I think it's okay. going to be uh, it's going to be very close at the end. I, I got us winning this one 31-30. to 30. Literally a walk-off field goal from Justin Tucker. We, you know, we walk in twenty-eight to thirty, and he hits it, and we we go home with a W. That's what I think happens oh, in man. this one. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's gonna be we're gonna go for two at some point when we score. Ugh. Try to be aggressive, maybe sometime before the half. I can see all these things happening on Christmas night. Watch out for Harbaugh. Harbaugh is gonna be acting different Christmas night. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> make sure, make sure, Alex, that you have the. Uh, you have the snippets ready to go because you'll see the face <laughs> on multiple different occasions. You might even see it before the game starts. I'm just telling you, he's going to be moving different all night, man. It's going to be Christmas night. I'm sure he's going to be off the, the spiked eggnog, him and Jim. You know what I mean? I, I can I can see it. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. But, yeah, I got the Ravens winning this one 31-30. to 30, And after this game, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really kind of kind of feel like, okay, we're off to the races now. Like, we're, we're ready to go win, win us one. You know, and you guys know what I mean by one. Uh, it's going to feel magical, right? It's going to feel better than the 2019 season. I remember when we beat them with a, with a walk-off field goal in 2019. Yep. Similar fashion, yep. you know? I can, see, I can see the same thing happening here. So, like I said, I'm going to go 31-30. to 30, uh, Ravens, my guy Alex is – what did you say again? I said 30-27 Niners, and it's funny you bring up John Harbaugh acting different. Did you hear his comment when he was asked, like, what he wants for Christmas? No. His they asked him his Christmas wish. He said world peace and a win. Not in that order. <laughs> yeah. I, I think John's acting a little bit different. <laughs> and and if we pull this off, I think I think Justin Tucker beats the wash allegations if he were to walk it off. Which I would really yeah. hope so. Because I don't he hasn't like, been facing those allegations. Yeah. Um 
and it's not like he's had a, you know a new holder, a new long snapper as well. Uh, mm. But we, it's Justin Tucker. He's gonna be fine. I'm not worried yeah. about him. In the, in the, that's my the least amount of my worries is Justin Tucker, his kicking. Um, and if he pulls that off, that's beating the wash allegations. On Monday Night Football, on Christmas Day, on the road. Yeah. 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 I need that. It's gonna be a great game, regardless. Again, make sure you drop your score predictions down below. Also, drop your keys to victory down below. Let us know if you agree or disagree with our takes on this. I just want to kind of drop in on you guys and give a little update, a preview episode before again one of the biggest games of the season. Um, again, we appreciate you all. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at the Purple Rain Podcast, like you see down below. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Sutton Death. Real simple, real plain. My guy, simply. You can find him on Twitter at SimplyAS10, on Instagram at SimplyAS10.prod, and pretty much anywhere else at SimplyAS10, as you guys know. Um, and like my guy led the episode with, you can go on Manscaped.com. And it's a little bit too late. It's a little bit too late if you want to order something for a Christmas gift from Manscaped. But look, you're probably going to get some money. Somebody's going to give you a gift card for Christmas, right? Or you might get some little, little cash, right? And a card, right? Go on Manscaped.com, type in PRP, save yourself 20% off. Get free international shipping. Do it. it doesn't get much better than that. You're welcome. Right. A gift from us to you for the holidays. Um, again, thank you all so much for coming out to this episode of the show. And with that being said, I'm going to let my guy Alex take us out. Yes, thank you all for coming through to this Purple Rain Report. Have a very merry, merry Christmas. I didn't bring my Santa hat. It'll be here for, for the next episode. Or hopefully the victory cool. episode of the Purple Rain Podcast. That's when the Santa hat will be on. Uh, but thank you all for coming through to this Purple Rain Report. And as always, stay positive, test negative. Yeah, and never, ever forget, even on the rainiest of days, to call God. It's been another episode of the Purple Rain Report. We're going to catch you guys in the next one.